Man kind of as a whole. It didn't necessarily break down the different areas in Grand Manan, um, but it did does break down the mainland quite a bit into specific areas. The other part of that that they started up is uh, daily occurrence reports that you can go and look at. Uh, again, this isn't something that you can necessarily search out by a uh, specific area. You can't necessarily put Grand Manan in there, but uh, each day it's updated. So April 12th, there'll be a, you can click on April 12th and it breaks down how many files are each uh, district in New Brunswick is responding to. And then it also does provide a bit of a summary on some of the more major incidences that they want the public to be aware of. So I do have the website addresses that I can provide to, uh, to the village. Uh, maybe they can put it on Facebook or wherever they do put their information that that can be put out to the public and they can all have access to that as well. So um, unless there's any other specific questions for me, uh, this is my first meeting here. I'd like to be make it a, a regular thing for me to attend these. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy to, to sit in and, and watch uh, how the meetings go. Anybody who is looking to speak with me as well, um, for the time being, I am planning on being at the office Monday to Friday. Those are my hours, uh, eight to five. And uh, so I am I'm more than willing to, to uh, have people stop by and, and say hi and, and meet me and, and speak about any uh, issues that they have. And uh, for the time being as well, we are one member, one position extra right now. So there's myself and then there's four constables at the office. Um, no timeline that I can give you on when that's going to change. But the actual number of members on Grand Manan, it's supposed to be one corporal and three constables. So <coughs> I would anticipate at some point it'll go back to that, but I don't have any kind of a timeline to provide anybody tonight for that. Any questions for the corporal? You're getting by easy. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. <clears throat> Eight, one under old business. Dillman Consulting, Rural Plan Update, Councillor Morris. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this was tabled from our last meeting. We had budgeted to have Dillon Consultant, Consulting look at our rural plan. It's currently about 15 years old and we are required to update it every 10, so we're a little bit overdue with that. But one of the concerns that we had was some of the wording in the proposal, particularly around um, marine spatial planning and how that was gonna interact, I guess, for lack of a better word, with our rural plan, mostly because the village, obviously, our jurisdiction ends at the high tide mark. We had a meeting with them on March 25th. I think it was a really good meeting, at least it was in my mind, and you know, some of the conversation that we had around the planning piece of it was understanding what happens in the coastal area helps us inform what happens as part of our plan as far as industry, that sort of thing. Um, we all recognize that doing any sort of consultation is going to be challenging in COVID times. They mm. have some, I think, really unique tools that they're looking at using, whether it's through surveys on Facebook, having virtual meetings, having in-person meetings and small gatherings, as many as they can. They've got some different tools that they want to use to really do a good job with the consultation. I think that's something that we've all encouraged them to do. Um, so with that, I think I'm prepared to make a motion that we would proceed with Dillon Consulting to update our rural plan. You heard the motion by Councillor Morris. Do we have a seconder? I'll oh. second that, Mr. Mayor. Councillor, Deputy Mayor Sturgeon. Question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. 8-2 is the animal bylaw tabled in October 2020 mm -hmm. until April. Update, Deputy Mayor Sturgeon. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, we got uh, we had the animal bylaw uh, first on the table in August of 2020. Uh, raised a lot of interest, to say the least. And uh, of course, all input is, is is valued. And so, anyway, we was hoping that we could uh, have things uh, more underway by October, but uh, it just 
just didn't allow, and of course the winter is until quite recently, we haven't had much of a chance to try the, a public meeting at all. And we really do value public input on this, on both sides of the issue, if I may say so as well. And uh, anyway, uh, so all that's to say that we haven't really done much to update. I will say, Mr. Mayor, I was very pleased with the public meeting that we had on Wednesday, because it was the first time it was an experiment, if I may say so, and I, I felt it was a successful experiment as well. I think we all could agree on that. So it'll be something that I believe that the new council will be dealing with. And uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd also like to point out that uh, I don't believe anybody around this table is anti-chicken by any stretch of the imagination, but I do believe that we're all pro responsible animal ownership. So anyway, uh, so I look forward to working with the new council, or hopefully I'll be here, but anyway, but uh, for the new council to, to look at this, and I, I think it will be more of a chance to uh, have some serious public input, which was shown proof, uh, possible on last Wednesday on another subject matter. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, any questions for Deputy Mayor Sturgeon? No, no, we have the 10 minute open session. Mayor, okay. Councilors, you remember three years ago this coming June when Gene Guptill got attacked by a couple of dogs and you folks was gonna have a meeting with the dog constable and Mr. Green, you said that you would do one better than that. You'd have an RCMP officer there. It's been going on for near three years. How come that meeting hasn't happened? Well, I think that the matter with, with Gene Guptill's dog got settled. Yes, but there's been other dangerous dogs since then. And nothing extra is being done to help control the problem. There's two more the other day, and you know about them. Mm. But there's no further thing other than that to help protect people other than what you did. But there's no more consequences to it. And if you sit down with the dog constable, you'll find there is things that could go along with other things that would help the problem a lot. Okay, now it's uh, Michael Monroe, our pharmacist, is going to give us a little talk. Hello, Mr. Mayor, counselors. Uh, just wanted to come talk to you guys a little bit. To, first of all, I'll introduce myself a little bit. So my name is Mike Monroe. I'm going to be taking over from Glenn and Margaret. I'd just like to say uh, uh, they've 40 years of service to the community, so I just I think that's worth recognition. So. Uh, very soon, next couple of days to weeks, depending how fast uh, lawyers and accountants can do it, be taken over from them. Uh, but he'll still keep a foot in the door and be here. So, so a little bit about me. So I've been coming on to the island on and off for about 10 years. Um, it's only been home for a couple months, but everyone's been in welcoming in. I appreciate that. I'm an Acadia Dow grad and a, a hospital pharmacy resident. Um, I came here, uh, retired after nearly 15 years in the armed forces. Um, had a pleasure of going all over the country. Uh, probably my, my highlight of my experience in my career was spending about eight months with a field hospital in, in northern Iraq. Um, and I, I chose this community, so I hope this community chooses me right back. So um, the key things I wanted to focus on going forward for, for me is I really want to focus on clinical pharmacy, collaborative care, and doing anything that we can to, to help the community. Small communities have unique needs, so um, as the time comes and people, there's different things that come up, I hope people will reach out. And if it's something that's within my, my wheelhouse of skills, I'll do it. And if it's not, I can hopefully try and point to the, the right direction. Uh, I wanted to give a quick update about the COVID-19 vaccine rollout. So the, uh, the pharmacy itself has now given 223 vaccines to date. So um, nine, 10% of the island. Um, 
we get intermittent shipments of it. So we're getting 30 doses coming up next Thursday, this Thursday coming and 60 doses the following week. And so we'll have just over 300 of the islands vaccinated by the end of next week. Um, I, I want to thank the community. It was quite overwhelming at first trying to field the, uh, the information from the provincial government was to call your pharmacy and people took that to heart, but it was very difficult to, to do anything else other than answer the phone for the first couple of weeks. But I appreciate people trying to hold the phone calls and, and letting us try and get a, a, an organization or a system upon us. Um, unfortunately, the information didn't really flow to us very much in advance. We get maybe a couple hours advance notice of what was going on. So we were, we were trying to make do as best we could, but it, they went smooth so far, I think. So I appreciate people holding their calls. And uh, if they have any information to go through the email address that we gave and following the announcements and the self-booking that we're going to do in the future, it'll really allow us to do the regular pharmacy needs. And uh, I just wanted to mention about exceptions. I get a lot of questions about, uh, I have the following conditions. I have this other, um, I have someone who, who has this condition. Can I be done? Unfortunately, it's relatively rigid, the, uh, the list of conditions and who can be done and how in the community pharmacy. So we don't have a lot of, of latitude as to who we can do. If people have complex medical conditions that they can't be done, it's going to be done through public health and the regional health authorities. If it's someone who is um, not having those complex health conditions and they meet one of the eligibility criteria, we're happy to do them in the pharmacy and we will. Um, the, the, anything to do to, to help cut down some of the administrative time so we can, so we can uh, serve the community on that way. So I'll, we'll be coming out with some self-booking apps, some self-booking components. And I know uh, it's, I've followed along some of the meetings before access to the internet is, is a concern, particularly amongst some of our older groups. So we are making exceptions for people that, uh, that don't have access, that, that, that aren't uh, online to try and make sure that they don't get missed because of that. So, um, I also uh, was asked to speak about the New Brunswick drug plan. I've had several questions about uh, um, when the store changes ownership, will I carry the New Brunswick drug plan? Uh, yes, I intend to do it. I've already reached out to all the people on the provincial side, so it's arranged in the back end. Um, for anyone who's not aware what the New Brunswick drug plan is, it's a drug plan that anyone in the province can sign up for. Um, it's scaled. The uh, Depending on your income, the co-pays are as little as Sorry, the monthly pays are as little as $16 a month and $5 per drug, and it goes all the way up as high as $166 and $30 per, per drug dispensed, depending on the scale based off your income. Um, we will look to carry that. Um, some of the, the components of the New Brunswick drug plan, unfortunately, is a little bit uh, it's slated against the, uh, a pharmacy owner, and there's some things that forces pharmacies to take a loss. So I want to try and hold it and have it to give access to people, but there is provisions in there to, to to lose that plan after 90 days if, if it's not working out. Um, some other things I wanted to, to work on is, uh, like I said, access to, to services, access to care. So I, I, I'm looking forward to working in fields with hypertension, diabetes, and cholesterol. Uh, when I was in the armed forces, one of my jobs was a clinical pharmacist. You would see patients and you would ha have that. So I've already reached out to the hospital. I know right now there's quite a backlog. So in any, any way that we could help to give people a little more access to care so people aren't going without. So I guess if anyone has any questions or concerns. I have a question, Mr. Mayor, if I may. Uh, I have run across a few stories that of uh, people that will say that are 85 plus that are waiting for them. There was 75 plus waiting for their vaccine. So when the 75 plus person showed up, they said, look, we still haven't covered everybody 85 plus yet. So there's a bit of a delay. Has that been local here or has been things going fairly smooth, I guess? It has been. Uh, the way it's timed, just because the shipments come generally from Moncton mm. and we're uh, a couple days out of sync with where the rest of the province happens. So it just so happens the day before we get our shipment, there's often the news brief where uh, um, they, they, ex they talk about the new eligibility group that's coming out. So our messaging is often out of sync and our plan for the week is sometimes uh, derailed if a new group is announced. So for example, that happened with, they dropped it from 75 down to 70. We were still had plans to get our, our 75 through. So yeah, that, that can happen sometimes. And it's just because um, being remote here, we, we get their shipment probably last of anywhere in the province. So um, yeah. sometimes our, our messaging is out of sync with what uh, might show up on the news or the radio. 
Yeah, thank you. <coughs> Excuse me, the only thing I wanted to add, uh, quite a few people told me you missed your calling. You yeah. should have been a doctor, the way you give a needle. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knew that they had one. Mm. I, I trust you they have, yeah. It's, mm. I'm trying my best. Yeah, you're doing a great job, my kids. Thank you. We're, and we're you. lucky to have you. We thank want to you. thank you for coming to Grandma and Ann. Thank you. And again, if there's anything we, or the council can do, whoever it may be, you know, you just come to council and... Uh, I imagine they will assist you. And the last point, if I, I forgot to mention, if I will, I know particularly in, in uh, remote and rural communities, there's a problem with substance use, uh, addiction, and addiction services. So that's another program that I want to bring here. And as soon as as soon as capable, I will. That that's a uh, for people looking to try and uh, to try and get their get their way off that in conjunction with counseling and everything else that can go on. So that's something else we're looking to do. That's great. Okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Number 11, new business, 11-1, music in the park, back backyard music, Shield Cove Ball Diamond, concert venue. As, as I said in, in my remarks earlier, th these people have put a lot of, lot of time in this, and it's, it's pretty near time we was coming down with the decision some way, so these people can get on with it or forget about it. That's my only comment. I'll listen to comments from anybody else that wants to comment. Mr. Thank Mayor, you. I'm going to make it. I'd like to say that, as I noticed earlier, the Wednesday night meeting I thought was a great success, and it was done in good order. Everybody was on there, spoke very well, and I think their points were made very close. Of course, a lot of them echoed what we said for the letters. And I must say, in my time on council, I, uh, I can't recall ever having as much letters on a subject matter. And, and one of the, th I encourage people to write letters, but I just, I t always tell them, don't just say you're for it or against it, say why. Because that's the, it's only the specifics that council can deal with so we can try to come up with some kind of solution, some kind of compromise. I will also say, Mr. Mayor, I've gotten some unsolicited input from people since Wednesday night on this matter. And, and these are people who are not passionate one way or the other. Just, I've been listening, paying attention to what people's got to say. And so, Mr. Mayor, I'm going to make a motion tonight. Okay, we, I'm sorry, Mr. Sturgeon. Uh, but a motion's always in order. Yes. Okay. <coughs> Am yes. I correct, Mr. You, Mayor? You can make a motion, yes. Yes, I can. And I'm going to make a motion tonight that after getting various input and listening to different people about their concerns, and there was a lot of things that was echoed very much the same, that, you know, uh, I like what Cal uh, Councillor Morris did. She actually took note of what everybody's concerns were and, and numbers and such like that, which I kind of was doing the same thing, but it, yours was even more detailed. And the motion is that we have a trial period with an 8.30 p.m. maximum shutdown time. And it'll be for Saturdays only. And like all municipal properties, Mr. Mayor, there will be a no alcohol pol policy on this uh, municipal property. And of course, Mr. Mayor, the province is the ones who has the say in the COVID protocols. In the province, we will follow the provincial protocols at that time. And they change literally, seems like every day at times. So what it'll have in the future, we don't know, but we will follow them. And I would also like for this trial period to end on Labor Day. And Mr. Mayor, after that, we can go back to the public and seek their input once again. So wins the motion, Mr. Mayor. So you heard the motion by Deputy Mayor Sturgeon. Do we have a seconder? I'd like to second that motion. Seconded by Councilor Worthing. Question. Yes, Question. sir, Mr. Mayor, on the question. Well, Councilor Sturgeon, I'm really surprised. Really surprised at what you have to say. 
you usually have some pretty good edges from up around edges from up around your part of the woods in New Brunswick. One of them might have been do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. The golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. We sat in that meeting with those people of concerns and told them that we would get back to them with any updates. We're not doing that tonight. You're making a motion. We just put the dirty socks in the washing machine. We're just starting to wring them out. And we've time to put them on the line and go back to those people and tell them of what your intentions were with that motion before we go any further. Councillor uh, Cheney, if you keep this up, I'm going to put you out of order. If I may, Mr. Yes. Mayor? Yes. OK. Well, actually, I'm glad you brought up that point because I do live my life in living, treating the people that I would, I would hope to be treated myself. And I'm also very much a man of my word. I don't have much money, so it's the only thing I got. And I told both sides two things. I said, there will be a public meeting on Wednesday evening. We encourage you to come. And I told them that there's going to be a decision on April the 12th. I don't and I also told them at that time, I said, I doubt there's going to be a decision that everybody loves because that just doesn't happen. And the other thing I told them is that it might very well be a decision that nobody likes. But it'll be a decision will be made. Now, as far as what was promised to the people, I don't remember myself making that promise. I certainly don't remember the mayor making that promise. And the mayor speaks for the municipality. I think, though, if I may, I think that there are some things as a council we still have to talk about as far as logistics and operation that I think would be beneficial to have another conversation around whether it's things like a fire plan and capacity, some of those questions that are still unanswered for up there that I think that we, and I think that we owe it to the people who wrote letters to have the conversation following the public meeting. I think that it's just due diligence as far as the consultation piece. The music in the park idea has a lot of support. I think we all recognize that. I've been overwhelmed with how much support there was on Facebook for this program in the afternoon. But I also think we owe it to the people who are doing it to make sure that we've done it properly and that we don't end up with a stage that doesn't pass inspection or we don't have capacity for a crowd up there even without COVID because we don't have the right sort of fire plan. I think that there's a lot of some of those nuts and bolts that we maybe haven't spent as much time on as we could have. And I would hate to see us start down a road and then discover that what we are trying to do, we can't do. And we end up creating more problems than what we are trying to solve. I just think that taking a breath for a couple weeks, because we still have one more meeting with this council before the election, regardless of what happens in northern New Brunswick with the lockdown afterwards mm. on May 2nd, I think that in the time between now and then, it gives us an opportunity to have that conversation, if we could table that motion, and then we can come back here and make sure that we have dotted our I's, crossed our T's, and we have done our due diligence for everybody on both sides. The that fire, would be my suggestion. The fire plan is already being done. I know it's being worked on, but it's not done. I and said so it's being done. I didn't mm -hmm. say that it was done. It's no, being no. done. Yep. No, understood. I but guess, I what, think that I we guess need... what bothers me is I've asked Councillor Fitzsimmons and I've asked you the other night, you say there's more questions. I asked what was the questions and nobody could tell me what the questions were. I don't think the question was, are there more questions? I think we need to talk about what we talked about the other night, what the questions were, I just think we owe it to people who took the time to write to actually have the conversation about what their concerns were. That's my, that's my feeling. And I'm entitled to my opinion, whether it's supported or not. Well, we had 147 come in today that's for it. Want to see it happen. Exactly. And that's what I, I said. 
is that there is a lot of support for it. And uh, I think we're, we're basically all agreed with the concept. But we had our first public meeting in God knows how long. And as you said, we value the comments, we, we value sure the do. questions, we, we want do. it, we, 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 we foster that. We, that's something that we want the island to have is a voice in this. And then before we, as a council, even get together and discuss the questions, discuss the suggestions, we have a motion on the table. Well, the, the, the that to me is, the, is there needs to be a procedural bylaw and it needs to be followed. The what discussions are done, it just lined up and, and done the right way. What we, discussions? We, we have not got <coughs> together and talked about this. What discussions are going on are going on between three councillors. It's not taking in all five. We didn't even know what was going on here tonight with us because nobody told us. Maybe it's on we, the agenda. We was not made aware of what was going on here. It's on the agenda. You haven't told us if we're putting up a stage, if we're hooking up electricity, if we're doing the parking lot, if we're spending all that money for a trial. It's not a trial if we're going to do all that. But we haven't even talked about it. Mr. Mayor, I do value everybody's opinion here. Everybody okay? needs and you know opinion. what? I've, as my dear old daddy always used to say, people who agree with you 100% of the time, something's not right. I mean, you know, so I'm glad we do help help a debate on this. But I, as I said earlier, these were the recurring things that I kept on hearing about, okay? One of the things that was, I think we all agreed with, notice I said music in the park. This is not backyard music, which is a whole different animal, okay? One of the things we didn't have the other night was how late is too late? What's a reasonable hour? Okay. But my input I am getting is 8, 8.30 for a few hours in the evening is, 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 is nothing terrible. It's no worse than a ball game or any other event. In all honesty, would we be having this discussion and having this debate if we were talking about somebody wanted to put on a special ball game every weekend, I dare say that we wouldn't be. That's what that field's there for, is a ball game. Yes. Are, are we going to build a stage? Are we going to hook up the electricity? Are we going to do the parking lot? Yes, I think are we, we should. Are we going to spend all that money? All on, that money. On well, a trial basis. Mr. Uh, uh, Councilor Fitzsimmons, I think everybody understands and remembers. I organize. I and I have organized community events long before I was a councillor and after I became a councillor and I've enjoyed every moment of it. I truly have. And I also understand that when I first started off doing candidate events, I had a budget of something like $2,500. And now we spend $10,000 for a day. Fireworks. We put thousands of dollars into that for half an hour. And I think that's great. And nobody questions it. Okay? We have a group of people that say, if you get us some material, we will build this. And this has multi-use, okay? And it's also, it's also of dimensions so that if something goes horribly wrong, and we have, and it just falls through, and we decide to put it somewhere else, is of the dimensions that it can be put on a flatbed trailer and shipped to somewhere else. And I think this is a reasonable solution that I think that will satisfy most. Will it make everybody happy? No. And you know what? I think we're, if we're all honest here, there will be some people that we will not make happy unless we just flat said no. I think, you know, and, yeah. and, and that's no disrespect, that, that's just reality. Yep. Yeah. But, but there's also the thing about the cost, that the money, the quote that we've got is from Mr. Brown. Mm -hmm. is he, has he talked to Silk Stevens or any engineering company about this? He had talked to Manzer about it. Did he talk to Silk Stevens or any, Rob, am I right, that, <coughs> that we'd have to get, talk to Silk Stevens or somebody about this because of the libel? Yeah, so civil liability, civil, you have civil the liability. engineering chance stamp on it. Right. Same, same as we do with the 
to do it. So I mean, the, the there's bill. more things to think about here than just, I mean, look, I think the concept's great, but I just think, it would, and I'm not asking for a lot of time. I think if we really dig into this and, and, and have the meetings and everything, we can get this done pretty quick. Ever since I've been here, that's, that's been my biggest gripe is how long things take to get done. Yeah. You can the ask Rob. I've been in there. Can and, you and yeah, again, I'm just, I'm almost done. Mm. And th this is going quick compared to other projects. And I think just another couple weeks, if you really want to get at it, we could have something done up. Council Worthing. I just like to say that, <coughs> excuse me, Graydon approached the council on February the 1st. We have worked with him. We have been in meetings with him. He has been very approachable about everything. He's taken all our suggestions, good, bad, and everything else. We've put it to the public. We've asked for information from them. It is now April the 12th. And I feel that Graydon deserves a respectful decision made um, on this matter, as well as the public. And I don't feel there's any reason to drag our feet. The, yes, there's going to be tweaks. Yes, we're going to have to look into things. There's no reason why that can't be done in the process. And I feel like they should be given the chance to at least at least if nothing else fail. They may not, but I feel a lot of this is speculation. And until they're given a chance, we'll never know. One and that's last my comment, opinion Mr. Nemeth, if I may. The only, um, one of the things I'm object objecting about is we told that gym full of people that we would keep them updated with any progress and advancement. That to me, by doing this tonight, isn't letting them know. It's like letting them know through after fact. That's what I object to. And we have not met since that meeting. That's, a, that's my objection to it, really. We haven't met as a council to discuss what went on at that meeting. As far as I knew, that was a fact-finding mission. We wanted to give information to the public and hear their concerns. I honestly do not remember that. But I, I, sat, I sat there when we got a chance to talk. I sat there and I told them that this was a good start, that we would take their suggestions, their ideas, their questions, find the answers for the questions, talk about their suggestions, and get back to them. And Mr. Mayor agreed with me. We answered every question that they asked. No, we didn't. We didn't? No. We what? never had a time thing. We still, we're still negotiating the time thing. And then there's more questions Nobody, popped that, up that since then. That was not then. a question from those people. That was not a question from those people. The times. Well, it's a question from the, me. The, the times on Music in the park was 8.30 at night. So why haven't we got together and talked about this? I say three of you have. There's two left out. I would say two of them got together and talked about it and made up this motion thing and never talked to the three of us. So it's according to which side of the table you're sitting on. Something smells in Denmark. I just don't know what the great big rush is, why we can't take just a little bit of time and talk it over. Oh my God, it's just what Tammy's sounds so worth and saying this started you can in have February. Your vote on the motion if you want to. I'm done. Mr. Mr. Mayor, once again, I have been involved in organizing some events and it takes a lot of time. A couple of weeks might not sound like a big deal, but really in organizing some things like this, it's every day counts. It really does. It's not long for making sure you've got even the right location, the right stage, the right, the right uh, plans for COVID and everything, and plans for parking, people coming up the lane, people leaving, emergency vehicles, all that sort of stuff. God, that's been looked after. No, it hasn't been. It has after. so. It has not. Well, God, I talked to the fire chief. And he's been talking to Sam Walsh, is it? He's the fire commissioner. Yeah. yeah. And what's he said? No parking on both sides of the road. That's all. That, have you got that in writing? And there Can has to, there has to be an egress in the fence. Have That's you got all. That in writing? Can we see it? Well, they suggested that we had to drill a well because we had to have water, and I can't figure out why we got to have water. 
because somebody's going to be cooking food. Well, it's not us. It's going to be the Rotary Canteen or, or Jennifer with hers. Lots of details. Two weeks isn't a long time. If we wanted to get at this, we could do it. Like I say, we're all agreed that the concept is good. There's not a problem there. Let's start her tomorrow at noon. I can be here. I'm away tomorrow on the mainland. Appointments. So we have a motion on the floor. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Nay. Aye. Motion defeated. I would make a motion that we have a meeting of the full council to talk about this issue, to bring it back to the council meeting on May the 3rd, 2nd, whatever our May council meeting is. What happened to the two weeks that Councillor Fitzsimmons is talking about? We can have a special meeting in two weeks if that's the wishes of the group, but I know how about no later than our May meeting. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, under procedural bylaw. Just to hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it. Yep. We have a motion on the floor. It's a point of order, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Under the procedure bylaw, once a motion has been decided on, it cannot be addressed for six months unless it is unanimously accepted by the members of council to address it again. So I don't want to be, but we got to follow proper procedure here, that's all. So. Okay. so do we make a motion to group, to, to the, address it again? That's basically what it would be, Councillor Fitzsimmons, yes. Thank you. So I would make a motion that we address this again at our May meeting. What or was the motion I, again? I would make a motion that we address the music in the park again at the regular May meeting of the Village of Graham and Ann. You heard the motion by Councillor Morris. Do we have a seconder? No, seconded, Mr. Mayor. Seconded by Councillor Fitzsimmons. Question? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. I would make a second motion that we would have a full meeting of council between now and the May meeting to talk about this, since I couldn't make that as part of the first one, unless that's understood procedurally before that. I have no problem with them at all. Okay. And I would second that. You heard the motion from Council Morris. Do we have a seconder? I second that. Councilor Janey. Question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Transfer station update. CAO. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Council. Uh, at your last uh, Council meeting, uh, the committee made a uh, report to Council uh, about the outlining the upgrades needed to handle the recycle component of the uh, transfer station. The transfer station is now over two decades old and uh, when the design was, uh, or the building was uh, constructed, uh, recycling was not part of the component. Uh, the, uh, and part of your package is the, the, an amended five-year capital investment plan. Uh, that's the formal name for our uh, gas tax fund. Uh, council had uh, wanted to have the gas tax fund finance the upgrades. Um, I would uh, like to, uh, appro uh, approval for the uh, upgrade uh, or the amended capital uh, plan. Uh, it's there. We had talked about this the last meeting, I think, yep. CEO McPherson, that you were not here. 
Um, this is based on the report Councillor Cheney gave at the meeting where we were going to do the upgrades, and so we need to formally do this. And I would make that motion to accept this to do the upgrades at the transfer station. I never heard the motion. I would move to accept the capital investment report. Is it? Oh, sorry, I didn't read to the whole end. Page what now? Page three. Thank you. I would move that the document entitled Village of Graham and Ann Amended Five Year Capital Investment Plan for the Gulf Tax Fund Administrative Agreement 2019 to 2023 be adopted. You heard the motion by Councillor Marsh. Do we have a seconder? Second. Seconded by Councillor Cheney. Question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Second, dangerous goods crossing. You've seen the letter from the Independent. They seem to run out of supreme and medium grade. And they'd like to have a second crossing. I guess we discussed probably, didn't we, Councillor Morris, Tuesday night? We had talked about some options with Coastal and DTI, that meeting we had two weeks ago, was it? Um, yeah, I can't remember what night it was we had settled on, but it, I was thinking it might be worthwhile having a Met and um, Irving with propane maybe come to the next meeting with them to talk about what the options are that would work for them. Well, I think it was the traffic numbers, wasn't it, why that we were thinking that night? We talked about Tuesday evening, but I think the question we were left with was, what happens with the trucks because we didn't want them going back on the first crossing you Wednesday morning. What now? Is it, we had to have two trips, yeah. one, one in and one out. one out. Or they'd have to wait and go on the late crossing off Graham and Ann Wednesday mm -hmm. night or something like that. Mm -hmm. So um, I would make a motion to support the additional crossing in principle, but I think we should have conversation with the dangerous goods users, however we would word that as well as some of the sports teams because I want to make sure we don't end up impacting them if we end up on another Saturday night, just as an aside. So, you had mentioned inviting somebody to a meeting from her? We normally have our, I think our next regular meeting with DTI and Coastal is in May, like mm -hmm. second or third week in May, so maybe we could invite them to come to that as well. It worked out well when we had um, the truckers come and we were talking about the um, dry dock. Remember, we had two or three right. meetings with them. And I think something along that model would make sense in my mind. So you're making a motion, we, or, or do you want to get in contact with, it should be a motion from council. That we invite them? We'll send a letter. To, I would, to I would, Coastal in the province. I would make a motion that we send a letter to Coastal in the province regarding the need for an additional dangerous good crossing. And we ask to invite the users of that crossing to our next regular meeting to talk about options. You heard the motion by Councillor Morris. Do we have a seconder? No second, Mr. Mayor. Seconded by Councillor Fitzsimmons. Questions? Just want to comment, Mr. Mayor. Another thing that has come to my attention very recently is that uh, I heat my house with propane and absolutely love it. And I do know, uh, so in fact, I've been telling other people about it. And I have been, uh, and they have got, one person in particular got in touch with me, says, due to the limited crossings, uh, Irving has added what they can supply now. So it's, uh, Anyway, so this, it's, not, it's not only holding up fuel, but it's holding up propane as well, which of course we all agree is very dangerous to it. So <coughs> that's all, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Okay then, any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, motion carried. Irving Oil, price of gas on Graham and Ann, we all know it's six or seven cents more than than it is on the mainland and they always used before. 
a reason for that was it cost that much, so much more to get it to grab an animal. That was probably so when they were bringing it with tankers and what, what not. But when you bring it over on the ferry, there's no mileage on the truck. There's no mileage, no overnight stay because they're in their sleeper. So really, it's cheaper to bring it to Grandma Nan than it is to take it to Bathurst. So <coughs> I've been told it's a clause that the province put in there. Whether that is right or not, I do not know. It's in the, it's in the I believe, regulation. Mr. Mayor, it's, it's three cents. <coughs> It, what the, from what the maximum? It's five it's, cents. It's up to five right. now? It's five. Okay. Yep, and it's in the regulation or something. It's under the Energy Utilities Board yep. is what it is. Now the maximum price is what the maximum retailer is, but sometimes, due to quirky math, you can actually, retailers on the mainland can sell for much less than what the maximum price is, especially dealing with Costco and other uh, wholesale retailers like that. So. Anyway, it's, uh, so it's five cents now. But uh, I'm in agreement with you, Mr. Mayor. I think we're all there. We really have to wonder, does it really cost that much to, to bring it here? So I, I would think the, we should write a letter to the Energy Utility Board, because they're the folks that really make the decisions here. We're supposed to be independent politically, as far as that goes. So. So if you're saying it should go there, probably you should make the motion. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I will make a motion to that effect that uh, council send a letter to the Energy Utility Board and, uh, and have them to explain how it really costs that much money to send fuel here to, to Graham and Ann. Because as you said, if they're trucking it all the way up to up north at a buck 20 a liter, a buck 30 a liter for diesel, this doesn't make much economic sense really. So you heard the motion by Deputy Mayor Sturgeon. Do we have a seconder? I'll second that. Seconded by Councilor Worthen. Question. Question. In addition to explain, could we also ask them to potentially review whether the five cents is still appropriate based on that explanation? Yes, I, I, I would accept that a friendly amendment, Mr. Okay. Mayor. Yes. Happy? Okay. Yep. Question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Did I miss something? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I must have missed a question or something. Mm -hmm. okay. Dentist for Graham and Ann. I've had quite a few people had come to me and said, what can the village do to attract a dentist? Well, that's something that I don't know because when Dr. Worthen was going through this process, there was a lot of people said yes until they found out that it was on an island. And then they said no. Mm -hmm. Some of them inquired, could we come there and work for the day and go home for night? No, can't. So I brought it up and we'll welcome any suggestions that anybody has that we could, could do to assist us in this. Mr. Mayor, I know in other remote areas, you know, like up north and such, they do have mobile clinics, uh, you know, uh, dental clinics. And I'm, I bet you there would be somebody that organizes that, whether it's federal or government or, there must be somebody that's organizing that. It's a provincial government would be doing it. Okay, so. But you must remember, that's how we got a dentist. That's how we started. Having a, a mobile? Well, yes. good, maybe history will repeat mm. itself then. <laughs> Mr. Monroe, got any ideas on that? You've recently moved here. And Yeah. 
and the regulatory burden doesn't change whether you're doing one share or ten shares. So yeah. I, think that, I think that would be the, the first thing to see if there's any change perhaps with the dental college um, at Dalhousie, see if they had any equipment that they were um, were towards it and it was, if they wanted to try and give to a remote community. Also, Mr. Mayor, uh, I would think, and probably Mr. Monroe, you would agree, you wouldn't want somebody doing one thing in that, and pulling teeth in it the next day. I mean, you'd, you'd want to be somewhere that kept things were kept, you knew it would be very sterile, you know, for example. And so, yeah, okay, anyway, that's my thoughts, I guess, on that. So probably we could get a letter off to the Department of Health to see if there's can be any assistance available for a, for a dentist to relocate to Grandma Nan? I would so move. You heard the motion by Councillor Morse that we get a hold of the Department of Health and do some inquiries on whether they can assist us in finding a dentist to come to Grandma Nan. Do we have a seconder? I'll second that, Mr. Seconded Mayor. by Deputy Mayor Sturgeon. Question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. I have a friend who has a daughter in dentistry in Scotland. And she's got three or four more years to go because I had talked to her when I knew Dr. Worthen was retired and she said, don't I wish I had mine in because I'd love to come to Grandma Nan. <clears throat> Twelve is, nope, behind. Twelve is committee reports, recreation director's report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just some updates, what's going on here this spring. Uh, the Seal Cove, new Seal Cove playground going in down to Sand Beach is slated to start construction on the 26th of this month. So we're looking at the week after next. Initially, we were looking at next week, but apparently there's a piece of equipment that's uh, a little bit farther behind the rest of it as far as getting shipped out. So it looks like everything will be here in time to start on the 26th. Looks like it's going to take about two weeks to complete. <clears throat> hopefully weather permitting. We all know what our springs are like here on the island. So hopefully we get some decent weather like we've been having. As well while they're there, uh, we've got an additional piece that we're going to put into Victoria Park as well to try to take advantage of some of the cost savings while they're going to be here anyway. The skate park, <clears throat> just a little update on that uh, very quickly. There has been a fundraising committee kind of formed and I believe the fundraising has started. So hopefully uh, next month we'll have some update on that to try to move forward. Everything's going very well here at the community center with our current phase of our operational plan. Uh, we're currently looking at about 90% booked for the gymnasium. Fitness center is 100% booked. And I must say we've had nothing but compliments for Tanisha and Heather and Sophia with the fitness staff. <clears throat> the new outdoor courts with the nice weather that we've been having has been taken full advantage of. I say with the nice weather, we had those pickleballers out there when it was minus <laughs> 10 out and they were shoveling snow. So I guess above zero temperatures, they're, uh, they're really gung-ho. But I just wanted to mention that we did have a kind of a anonymous donation from one of the members that uh, purchased the wind screening. The wind screening goes all the way around the perimeter fence. And for those of you that know <coughs> about the pickleball, uh, the wind screening makes all the difference in the world here, especially in the summertime with our afternoon south west. So uh, thank them for that. Initial talks <coughs> have begun with baseball and softball for the 2021 season. Uh, we're currently looking at getting some uh, some top off with some infield mix for Castilla and Grand Harbor like last year. 
We always go around with uh, some seed and fertilizer to go around and do all the oat fields just to try to make them a little bit greener. They take quite a bit of abuse for the summer. Other than that, we have one small piece of fence that needs to be finished to, to finalize last year's install at Castalia. It's kind of a gate that goes by the <coughs> left field dugout to allow us to get on and off the field with the machine. The garbage cans, <clears throat> we know the garbage cans, the tender doesn't go out until early May, but we've had some inquiries with all the good weather. Some people are getting out and around the parks. So we did take some of the new receptacles and put them at the Castellia Park as well as North Head. And I mentioned to uh, the CAO the other day that it may make sense to also put one at North Head, <clears throat> Beach, the Marsh, and Seal Cove. And uh, we'll look after the removal of the garbage until a tender is rewarded. The arena, uh, we officially shut that down. <clears throat> uh, the ice come out on Friday and it was uh, a bittersweet close to the very challenging 2020-21 season. It was certainly a struggle on all points. As you all know, you know, yellow phase, orange, red, back to orange, back to yellow, lots of rules. But if I must say, a silver lining that we did have at the end of the season was when the kids come back to school after March break on March the 8th, we did get back to yellow. <coughs> And at that point, everybody involved <coughs> with the minor hockey say we have to do something for the kids to finish the season. We had a small three-week window because most municipalities take their ice out <coughs> at the end of March, which gave us, I guess, said, three weeks. We organized a very quick round-robin type of play where all the teams played each other once in their divisions. And at the end of that, <clears throat> the first and second teams were going to have to end up playing with a very untraditional form of our, what we have our, of our day of champions. I was very pleased <clears throat> to say that at the end of everything with the, uh, the round robin play, all three Grammanian teams finished either in first or second place for their divisions. But like Mayor Green said in his opening remarks, <clears throat> none of that would have been possible without the countless hours from all of our volunteers. This year, more than ever, with all everything thrown at them with COVID-19, the additional support needed, <clears throat> each team needed to have their own COVID liaison. But one <clears throat> important stat <clears throat> as I finish up is not one case of COVID-19 came out of an arena as a result of hockey in New Brunswick this season. So we'd like to thank the volunteers for all their countless hours of contact tracing and everything that had to go with them <clears throat> for organizing parents. We appreciate the parents' patience. A lot of parents were only able to get in one to a time, two at a time, back to one at a time. But at the end, we were able to free up enough to get everybody into some of those important games at the end of the season, which was great. So that's it from our report. If anybody has any questions. You're getting by lucky. I'm Thank you. By very lucky. Mm. There's one thing I'd like to add on that. In my talks with Chris, he had told me that Home Hardware donated some hockey equipment for minor leaguers. And before I'm mentioning here tonight, I had talked to them to see if it was okay if I'd done that. And they said, we didn't do that to get recognition. And I said, yeah, but there's been a lot of negatives out there, so something nice has happened. So we want to thank the uh, people at Home Hardware for their donation to the, to the hockey program. Okay. Awesome. They gave us just under $2,000 worth of equipment for the kids. So a big thanks to, uh, to Stephen and Lynn. Thank you. <clears throat> Library report. Councillor Fitzsimmons. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Gonna try and do this with the glasses on, but we'll see. This is a manager's quarterly report that I'd like to read. Following the new procedures for class visits and with a few adjustments, GMCS class visits continue throughout the fall months. If you were on Facebook in November and December 2020, we hope you took opportunity to watch our first online program. We held four weekly family Christmas 
ornament workshop programs, which included weekly ornament kits available for participants to pick up at the library. This was a success with Facebook viewers with 1,060 views in the first week alone. So it's good participation. We had fun with this program, lots of laughs, of course, and the unseen bloopers. Uh, watch for additional online programs in the coming months. Unfortunately, our planned modified gingerbread village family workshop and open house was canceled due to COVID-19 orange level restriction. And that's really looked forward to each year and it's, it's uh, building the gingerbread houses. So that was unfortunate, but maybe next year or maybe later on this year. As you know, throughout fall and winter season, we have moved in and out of COVID-19 yellow, orange, red levels. Each change affected the level of service at the library based on health and safety procedures for each level. Even through these changes, the changes were necessary for the health and safety of our patrons and staff. We were very pleased that the library remained open, offering basic library services, even in the red level. Curbside pickup at the library has continued with additional patrons taking advantage of the new service. New promotional materials planned for this service in the new year. So that'd be now, so if you go on and have a look, you can see what's happening with that. Collection maintenance continued through the fall months and into the winter season, including the review and withdrawal of current material and selections, and purchasing of the new items for our collections. From November 27th to December 4th, we held our first combination virtual and in-person scholastic book fair. Not knowing what to expect in this COVID environment, we're especially pleased to report that we have had our most successful book fair to date, raising $1,559 for the purchase of children's and young adult material. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, approval to pay the following invoices from the General Operating Fund. Beers Neils, year in 2020, $8,625. Dutchman Contracting, Castalia Shoreline, $8,970. Silk Stevens CNC D Site Maintenance, $4,751.32. Silk Stevens Limited, Long Eddy, $2,875. Island Home Hardware Urea for the airport, $4,878.95. And uh, for the asset management plan, $19,920. It's a different what? Oh, okay. Yep. The Mr. reason Mayor. I was saying that it said 13.2, so I was carrying on from 13.1, I guess. So anyway, it's uh, Beers, Neils, Dutchman, so two of Silk Stevens, and an Island Home Hardware. I would move to pay the aforementioned invoices as read. You heard the motion by Councillor Morris. Do we have a seconder? A second, then, Mr. Mayor. Second it by Councillor Fitzsimmons. Question. Question, Mr. Mayor, <coughs> on the Dun Dutchman contracting shoreline at Castilla. That was the additional work they did from the park up around the corner to cross by Jeff Lee to where we match into the existing to prevent further erosion there. Okay? Yes. Thank you. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Then we go into closed session. No. Thirteen two. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Transfer $19,220 from the General Operating Fund to the Gas Tax Fund. I Re would so move. Reimbursement for the Asset Management Plan. And I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. Removed by Council Morrison, seconded by Deputy Mayor Sturgeon. Question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. So now is closed session for the financial of the North Head Cemetery mowing. 
I would move we adjourn to closed session. You heard the motion by Councillor Morris. Do we have a seconder? I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Sturgeon. Question? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carried.
Call this regular council meeting back to order. We was in closed session because of uh, the tender for the North Hid Cemetery mowing, and we received two tenders. Um, Terry Smith, $870, and Corey Frost, Farron Frost, and Saul Fitzsimmons was $750. I would move that we accept the low tender for mowing of the North Head Cemetery. You heard the motion by Councillor Morris. Yeah, Seconder. Second. 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 Seconded by Councillor Cheney. Question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? If you're wondering why Councillor Fitzsimmons is, his son is in on one of the bids. This is the reason he wasn't here. Yeah. <clears throat> so that was the uh, only thing that we had, and uh, we could probably do a little off the record if somebody wanted to before we adjourn. What if we adjourn and then we could do it? Okay. Mm -hmm. well, I heard the motion by Councillor Morris that we, that we, we adjourned, Second. seconded by Deputy Mayor Sturgeon, so this meeting is closed. But if somebody wants to say something or ask a question, uh, we'll try to uh, do it for them. Camera's off. Yeah. Uh, if everybody would remember to please turn the mics off on the remote, please. The battery will be good for next month. Uh, I don't think so, because I, I feel that, uh, still